Joel, Eagle, Idaho Independent. Good morning. Good morning, John. Hey, you know, C-SPAN generally does a very good job of educating the public with your forum. But I think one area where you really fall short is when you perpetuate the myth that we have a Democratic vote for president. We don't. We have a constitutional republic. And even you, you guys run an ad, and you have, you, you have a tagline, saving our democracy. Well, we don't have a democracy. We do have a dem democracy when it comes to states where we elect senators and congressmen, and the individual vote counts. But I think you could do a lot of education by changing that tagline from democracy to constitutional republic, and even correct people when they call in and say, we don't have a democracy per se. Plato and Aristotle debated that issue about 3,000 years ago. And, and, All and, right, and Joel, you're doing a good job. Joel, stick in, in there for me. Uh, so you're, uh, why does it concern you? Uh, because people call in a, a, about this before, uh, to the point where, where we've talked about it uh, several times. There was a column uh, that uh, I found on this a, a few weeks back when this topic came up. Uh, it's from the Washington Post. Uh, the, the headline is the United States uh, of America, a republic, or a democracy, and, and it looks into the, the use of this word over the course of uh, American history. Uh, the, uh, the author noting that America, the American form of government has been called a democracy by leading American statesmen and legal commentators from the framers on. It's true that uh, some framer-era framer commentators made arguments that distinguish democracy and republic. See, for instance, the Federalist Number 10, though even that uh, first draws the distinction between pure democracy and a republic, only later uh, just saying democracy. Uh, but even in that era, representative democracy was understood as a form of democracy alongside pure democracy. John Adams used the term representative democracy. Noah Webster in 1785, St. George Tucker in his 1803 edition of Blackstone. Uh, so did Thomas Jefferson in 1815. Uh, and it goes on to, to note James Wilson, one of the main drafters of the Constitution and one of the first Supreme Court justices defending the Constitution in 1787 by speaking of the three forms of government being the monarchical, the aristocratical, and the democratical. Uh, not to make an argument on either side, but, uh, but this distinction, why does it worry you so much? Well, because I think people, when they call up, and especially this presidential election, they were under the illusion that their individual vote actually went toward the president. It didn't. It went toward who was going to be in the Electoral College. And I think there's a, there's a misunderstanding as to how powerful the individual vote actually is. Should we get rid of so the Electoral it's College, Joel? Should it be a— should, Pardon me? Do you, should we get rid of the Electoral College? No, I don't think so. I think it was put in brilliantly by the founders— to prevent a tyrannical leader. Um, I may be wrong on that, but that's what I've read. But I just think that, you know, it's a moot point, maybe. But I think that, uh, you know, some of the people that call up think that, they're, that we're in a democratic vote system, and we're not, except for the states. Joel, has the Electoral anyway. College done a good job of uh, keeping us from electing tyrannical leaders? Well, we've never had uh, Hitler. <laughs> Although some people would claim that maybe uh, Trumpy was, but I, I don't I don't think so. His personality may have been Hitler-like, but certainly his policies were admirable. That's Joel in Eagle, Idaho. 